In this recording, we look at an example of calculating a second order derivative in a case where implicit differentiation is required. So let's suppose we're wanting to calculate the second derivative of y with respect to x. Then this method would be needed if our original expression had a mixture of x and y terms such that it was difficult or impossible to make y the subject. It's worth remembering before we start on this example that if we have an expression involving a mixture of x and y terms, then the derivative with respect to x of a function of y is the derivative with respect to y of f of y times dy dx. So let's have a look now at an example. So let's look at the example where we want to find the first order and second order derivatives of y with respect to x, given y to the 4 minus 6x squared equals 8. Now you might initially think, why don't we just rearrange this to make y the subject? We could get y to the 4 equals 8 plus 6x squared. Trouble is, y would then be plus or minus 8 plus 6x squared to the 1 quarter, which can get a bit more messy to differentiate. So that's why instead of doing that, we're going to use implicit differentiation here. So first, let's find the derivative with respect to x of each side of the equation. Since d dx of y to the 4 minus 6x squared will be the derivative with respect to x of 8 in this case. That's then going to become on the left y to the 4 that will differentiate to 4y cubed times dy dx. Since we're differentiating a function of y with respect to x, 6x squared that will just become 12x and the derivative with respect to x of 8 is just going to be 0. We now rearrange this to make dy dx the subject, giving us 4y cubed times dy dx equals 12x. Therefore, dy dx is equal to 12x divided by 4y cubed, which will simplify down a bit further, since 4 is a common factor there, to dy dx being 3x divided by y cubed. So that would be the first step here. So this is what we've found so far, that dy dx equals 3x divided by y cubed. And we can leave it like that, but in this particular case, I'm going to just rewrite this as 3x times y to the minus 3, just so that it's a bit simpler to differentiate again at the next stage. Now the second order derivative of y with respect to x is going to be the derivative with respect to x of dy dx. That is, in this case, we're going to need to differentiate 3x times y to the minus 3. And this is going to require a product rule. And for a more step-by-step -step example of this, you might want to watch our maths cast on implicit differentiation using the product rule. But let's just do it fairly quickly. We'll let u be equal to 3x, let v be equal to y to the negative 3, although with the product rule it doesn't really matter which one is u and which one is v, then du dx is 3, dv dx is going to become negative 3y to the negative 4 times dy dx. And the product rule says that we get u times dv dx plus v times du dx when we're differentiating a product. So therefore, in this case, the second order derivative of y with respect to x is going to become 3x times that all expression there. So that's going to simplify to be 3x times negative 3 y to the negative 4 dy dx, I'll tidy that up a bit more in a minute, then v times du dx is just going to be 3y to the negative 3. That's going to be the initial form in which we could write this second derivative. And I've just rewritten it here again, just slightly simplified, just with the 3 times negative 3 of the first term simplified to give negative 9. But what do we do now? Is this sufficient for the second order derivative of y with respect to x? 
Well, not really, because it's still got dy dx in it, whereas we really want all of this just in terms of x and y on the right-hand side, not with other derivatives. But we remember dy dx we found earlier was just 3xy to the negative 3. So we simply substitute that in to our expression for the second derivative, which in this case means the second derivative becomes negative 9xy to the negative 4 multiplied by 3xy to the negative 3, subbing that in there for the dy dx part of this, plus 3y to the negative 3. And then as usual we can just tidy that up a bit more using indices in this particular case and also multiplying those constants together. That will become negative 27 x squared in this case and then y to the negative 4 times y to the negative 3 gives y to the negative 7. So altogether the second derivative of y with respect to x becomes negative 27 x squared y to the negative 7 plus 3 y to the negative 3. So it's a very similar process to finding the first derivative. The main thing being that if our second derivative has any dy dx is in it, we also replace them with the expression we found for dy dx. So this is an example of calculating a second order derivative when we also require use of implicit differentiation.